So NASA recently reached out because they needed new fake footage of the moon for their ongoing We Totally Went There campaign. Don't worry, I told him I was busy generating realistic renders of the flat earth. Here's how to make a realistic moon surface in Blender totally procedural. Let's create some fake craters and fake science. Okay, so this is basically pretty simple. We're just gonna mix some procedural textures on top of each other. So let's get started. Let's add in a... Let's add in a plane, make it about 100, no, 1,500 meters wide and make sure that you apply the scale. So that's one again here. And let's increase the view end because the plane is larger than the view end. Okay, let's open up geometry nodes, geometry nodes editor, new and first of all we are going to need a bunch of new subdivisions let's increase the first one to six let's add another one and make sure you turn it down to zero before editing it again because it will take a lot of time to calculate if you apply another six subdivisions and let's go with three yeah let's start with a voronoi texture for the main craters so let's add in a voronoi texture and if you have this activated here the viewer node color op opacity you can preview it with the viewer node let's preview it like this and now you can see the voronoi texture is way too big or yeah it's way too small you could decrease the scale like this but working with a bunch of decimal numbers is kind of annoying. So I'm gonna use a position node and yeah, just manipulate the vector with a math node. So let's use a vector math node and divide the position by 3000 like this. And yeah, now we can use normal numbers like this. So let's use scale of two. And now we're going to, you going to use a map range node, decrease it from the max and add a math node, set it to subtract. And yet yeah, with this math node, we can basically control the influence or the radius let's decrease it let's set it to from max to 0.2 and use a subtract i think i'm gonna go pretty low so what we're going to do is add a set position node to the plane and we want to use this warner texture as the offset so let's add in a vector math node before we plug it into the offset and set it to multiply and let's only multiply the z-axis by 100 and now we can see we already got a crater going on here let's decrease like to let's put this to 0.1 and let's add a vector math node set to add and now we can yeah, manually change the position of the of the Warner texture. Let's put one of the craters right in the middle here with these values. So to create this typical crater shape, we are going to use a float curve to manipulate it. And the crater usually goes up in towards the edges and then down again. So let's recreate this shape by adding a point in the middle here and then going down to again and let's set this to vector handle so we get this sharp spike here let's put this around here and also add this it's a little bit deeper inside the crater than outside so let's put this one at the end up again and now we can just smooth this out by adding a point in the middle here creating a smoother transition and the same for here now you could do something like this to add have a spike in the middle again or something if that's what you're going for so 
So this is basically the shape of our crater. So the next thing we want to do, we want to do is add a noise texture. Use the same divided coordinates again. And let's set this one to hetero terrain. And we're going to add this terrain, this noise texture onto our crater. Use a factor like this. And yeah, let's use, let's increase the detail. Let's set the detail to like 15. Slightly increase the roughness. And I'm going to use a offset of 0.5. And let's, now this is pushing everything up way too much. So let's add an, another math node. Set it to subtract, subtract 0.5. And now we can also change the strength of this effect, of this terrain, of this hetero terrain noise with a multiply node. So let's multiply it by something like 0.3, like this. Yeah. We could also add a set shade smooth at the end here to get a little bit of a smoother surface in the viewport. And now we got something already moon craterly looking. Um, now the, the shape of the crater is a little bit too perfectly round. So let's distort the Voronoi texture with our noise texture here. We can do this with a mix RGB, mix color node. Add this one into the vector. Add the noise texture into it. And let's use linear light as a mixing mode factor thing. And decrease the factor to a very small number, like 0 0.00. That's already a bit strong. Let's add another 0, 5. Yeah, something, something like that looks good. So now the moon has a bunch of smaller craters too. And we're gonna add these just the way we did the big crater. We are going to duplicate this whole setup here. We are going to duplicate the Voronoi texture and add it again. Add it together with the rest. But this time we are going to increase the scale by a lot. Let's say 90. And yeah, this, these, are, these um, should be a lot smaller. So let's multiply them again. Decrease the scale. Let's use like 0 0.01 or maybe 0.2. And yeah, now we got a bunch of little craters here. We could yeah, play around with the scale a bit. 40. Let's try that. Increase the scale. And we got a bunch of little craters. Um, we could even add another layer of small craters. Let's duplicate this one more time. Add it together with the rest, like this. And let's increase the scale, decrease the scale even more. Let's go with with 80 this time and decrease the power again, something like this. And yeah, that's basically it for the geometry nodes. You can already take a look at us in the rendered view. Let's remove the world, just make it black. And the cool thing about the moon is there is basically no real lighting there. So no atmosphere, just straight um, harsh sunlight, which is makes lighting a lot easier. Because basically all you have to do is add a sunlight, rotate it a bit, and yeah, it starts to look pretty moon-like already without even any shader. Let's in let me enable denoising and let's increase the strength of the sun. Let's use like three or four. And yeah, we can increase the subdivide mesh to get more detail. Okay, let me tell you a story about one of my clients. Let's call him Steve. Steve was broke, his heart just got broken, his car exploded, his dog ran off with the neighbor's cat. His parents hated him, his mom said he was a disappointment. Tragic. But then Steve bought my nature generator. And within minutes of using my add-on, his renders went from below average to hire this man right now. 
VFX studios lined up, his ex wanted him back, and apple trees in his hometown started to grow golden apples. His stalk returned. Honey started to flow in the river. And the same thing happened to people who bought my city generator or the forest generator. True story. Probably. All of these products do exactly what the title says. They generate a city. By the way, I'm also working on a huge new update for the city generator right now. Nature assets like rocks, cliffs and mountains or a forest, all with procedural controls and fully customizable. And by the way, there's going to be a sale on the blender market on all of my products. If you don't buy one of these products, you soon will be dead. Somewhere in the next 90 years or so. I think that's it. And yeah, let's get into the shader. So in the shader, we're going to just replicate this node setup from the geometry nodes and just use, this, use it as bump. So you can just select all of these nodes here, make sure one is highlighted. And we're gonna copy all of the nodes except the position because that one doesn't ex ex exist in the shader. Hit Control and C, go to Shader Editor, create a new material, and let's paste these in. And what we are going to do to replace the position in the shader is we are going to add a geometry and use the position of the geometry. And now we got basically our displacement map also, yeah, in as a um, in the shader here. So I'm not gonna mix them together like this. Let's disconnect and let's delete these add shaders. And I'm gonna use the big crater here. And let's use this one as the color. And now we are going to recombine the... Now we're gonna recombine the big craters with the small craters again. So let's add these small craters together and now we have basically finer control over how much influence these will have. So I'm gonna go with like point, point zero 0.06 or 7 and let's add in a bit of our noise terrain also into the color like this something like this this is going to be our color map and let's randomize this a little bit more to get more brightness variation with a color ramp and let's just add a bunch of new points in here and just randomize the brightness a bit and yeah now we're going to put this into our color and let's also Turn the roughness all the way up because the moon isn't very reflective like that. So already looking pretty good. Let's just add more fake detail of the geometry with bump notes. So let's add in a bump, bump note like this. And let's start with our terrain, with our noise, with our hetero terrain noise. Use it as a height factor, normal. And let's increase the distance. And you can already see this makes the mesh look a lot more detailed than it actually is. You could also decrease the detail or the roughness a little bit if you want to. Because if it's if there's too much detail and the details get too small and you can see it gets lost a little bit from the distance. So play around with that value. And let's enhance the craters too. I, let's add another bump note. Use the bump note before as the normal. And let's add the small craters into it as a height factor. And yeah, you can enhance the look of these craters a little bit with that. So the position, you can see that the textures don't match exactly with with the vector of the geometry nodes uh, because apparently I thought the geometry position would be the same as in geometry nodes, but it isn't. So let's just go to the geometry nodes, add a store named attribute before the subdivisions. The attribute we want to store is a vector 
and we want to store the position name it just position and now we can bring this value into our shader editor by just adding a attribute type in the name and use this instead of our position and now you can see everything lines up perfectly so now we can actually enhance the look of our small craters like this fake moon done yeah the project file is on patreon subscribe if you also think the planet is default cube shaped